Hello everyone, my name is Chris. As some of you might have seen my videos already, I've done a couple where I played a Smurf. I did one where I played the Eighth Dwarf. I was kind of an angry man. Uh, and I also did a couple of slideshows. But this time, I'm going to talk about something a little more serious. Uh, you can't really tell that by my hat, but I thought it'd be funny. So, I'm going to give you guys a little lesson on gen genetics. And I promise it won't be long. It should only take a couple minutes, and it won't be too hard. I'll try to make it as fun as possible. Okay. As you can tell from looking at me, I have a disorder that most of you have never heard of or never even thought about. And although most of you out there would think that I have dwarfism, you aren't entirely correct, but you're not entirely wrong at the same time. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. I'll tell you a little bit more about that later on. I have a genetic disorder called Hunter's. Hunter's is also called MPS2. Hunter's is part of a family of disorders called MPS disorders, and there are a total of six in all. MPS isn't that important, so I'm not going to get too much in depth into the meaning. All you really need to know is it means pretty much big sugar storage. Now, I know people hear the word sugar and they immediately think diabetes. The thing is, this isn't normal table sugar, it's sugar that your body makes. And diabetes, the cause for diabetes, has absolutely nothing to do with any MPS. So, you actually are wrong thinking that diabetes in hunters is any way related. Okay, so now to know what causes hunters, you need to first get a little background into, um, into genetics, the basic structure. And as you can see right here, wherever it is, um, this is a picture of DNA. It is a very simplified picture, but it is a picture of DNA nonetheless. Now, when you think of DNA, um, I want you guys to think of, of this picture, um, a file cabinet. DNA is basically just a really big file cabinet or hard drive, whatever way you want to look at it. And um, it has a bunch of directions in it or instructions on how to make different proteins. Now, proteins are basically make us who we are. Whatever a protein controls your height, your weight, your eye color, everything about you is controlled by your proteins. So, here's a picture of a chromosome. This is DNA when it's all tied up together. It looks like this. You have 46 chromosomes in your body. Half from your mother, half from your father. Now, in a condition known as Down syndrome, they have one extra chromosome, so they have 47 in total. Now, back to the file cabinet. This cabinet has millions of different instructions on how to make proteins. Some are good, and some get messed up in the transfer, so they're bad. Now, there are many different reasons this bad, this bad mistake or this mistake happens, but the easiest way to remember it, since you get half genes from your mother, and the other half on your father, they, they all have to be copied. Now this is millions and millions of copies that have to be made. And I know when I go to make a copy of the Xerox, I make a couple mistakes every so often. So getting millions and millions and having one or two wrong is not that big of a deal until you turn out to get something like me and one little tiny gene can cause a big difference in your life. Okay, and now back where I was, I don't remember, but uh, I had to pause it for a minute. Um, the mistake in my case was passed down from my mother. So both myself and my younger brother, we both have this basic, basically an instruction that just isn't 100% correct. So it only works part of the time. And this protein, in this case, is actually an enzyme, and it's made incorrectly, so it doesn't work 100%. So, um... If you think of the body as a recycling plant, as a recycling plant, you have this coke can right here. 
Now, in a normal body, what happens is it's break down, recycled, and used again. Now, in bodies like myself and other people with MPS disorder, these cans are not broken down. They are basically just stored all over the body in every cell, actually in your hand. So if you see, my hand is not quite normal, and that's why. Now, back to the term dwarfism. The reason you are incorrect is because, a, well, the reason you are correct is because the basic concept or basic definition of a dwarf is any person, any adult person below 4'10". And as you can tell, I'm not 4'10", I'm actually 4'4", so technically I am a dwarf. But the term is incorrect for several factors, one of them being that myself and many other people find that word to be offensive. And the term midget is actually even worse. Um, I would compare using those two words as using the N-word to describe a black person. It's not nice, and it's very inconsiderate, and we don't find it to be correct. So, the term dwarf and midget are both similar. So, they're both very discriminative. Um, also, there's over 200 different disorders that can cause dwarfism. So, calling me a dwarf is lumping me into a group with 200 other different disorders. So, basically, it'd be like causing calling every Japanese person or Chinese person Asian. It's not right to lump people together like that, and um, you just shouldn't do it. So, so, when most people see me or any other LP or little person, they think of someone like this. Now, this gentleman had a disorder called... I can't even spell it, so I'm going to put it up there so you can see what it looks like. Um, this disorder it makes up 70% of dwarfism cases in the world, which is why you normally think of this person when you think of dwarf. Um, these people, they have something called disproportionate dwarfism. That means that their torsos and their legs and arms are not all the same, meaning they have normal torsos, but shorter arms and legs. Now, for someone like me, I have proportionate dwarfism. That means that my arms, legs, as you can see, are relatively the same size, or not the same size, but they're correct for my body size. Okay, so, um, I guess that's about enough information for one time, and I hope I was able to educate you and also edu entertain you at the same time. Please feel free to enjoy my other videos, and, um, please also look up my charity that I recently start, started. It's called Courage to Make a Difference. And although the goal of Courage to Make a Difference is to promote awareness of MPS disorders, I'm here to promote acceptance and education of all people. Nothing but good things can come from learning about others. So, until next time, I guess just drop me a line if there's anything you want to know. If not, have a nice day.